Hi everybody and welcome, this is the Apostate Prophet. Many of you are aware that Muslims consider Jesus an important religious figure, but they differ very much in how they respect Jesus. According to Islam, Jesus was not divine. He was not the Son of God. He was fully a human, merely a prophet of Allah. He was a Muslim. Muslims believe that Jesus was not crucified, but rather someone else was made to look like Jesus and crucified, and Jesus was raised to heaven by Allah. This belief is found in the Quran, chapter 4, verse 157 to 159. So Islam recognizes Jesus, but strictly rejects his divinity, his status as the Son of God, and even rejects the crucifixion. This is a big issue, and I'm not here today to argue that he was crucified or that he wasn't crucified. That's an endless, pointless discussion, if you ask me. What I want to do today is to ask some questions, and the most important question is, why? Why was Jesus not crucified, according to Islam? What's the logic in that? Other prophets were killed before Jesus, according to the Quran. The Quran repeatedly condemns the Jews as killers of prophets, without specifying which prophets exactly were killed by Jews. So according to the Islamic text itself, prophets were killed, so it is not unreasonable for a prophet to be killed. Some would say that according to Islamic belief, Jesus is supposed to come again for a second time, but not like the Christian form of Jesus. He's supposed to be a very Muslim Jesus who comes back and who fights for Islam, brings the end times, and then finally dies. So people could argue that him dying at that time, 2000 years ago, during the crucifixion, would be incompatible with his return. But that's not really true. According to the Quran, other people were resurrected. Jesus himself brought people back to life. Certain people lived for centuries and for undefined periods of time. It would be completely conceivable for Jesus to die on the cross 2000 years ago, but then to come back again. Allah can do anything. Here is the bigger problem. Islam's idea that Jesus was not crucified, but that somebody else was crucified instead of him, is an idea that came before Islam within certain sects and heretical beliefs and movements within Christianity. Crucifixion denial, that Jesus was not crucified, and substitution hypothesis, that somebody else was killed instead of Jesus, are ideas that are found in docetic Christian beliefs, or Gnostic Christian beliefs, or movements like the Bogomilists, or Monophysites who believe that Jesus was only fully divine, not fully human, or not part human. But what makes them so different from the Islamic idea is that they have a reason to believe that Jesus was not killed. What all of these movements and beliefs have in common is that they believe Jesus was divine, or he was of a different nature. Because of that, they developed the idea that if Jesus is divine, if he is God, if he's not at all human, then it doesn't make sense for Jesus to be killed on the cross, to be crucified, to suffer, and to die. Which is why these movements established certain ideas, such as that Jesus did not actually die, but that there was only a representation of Jesus on the cross. Or that Jesus did not suffer, and he survived the crucifixion and then ascended to heaven or that somebody else was crucified instead of him. In one famous example, according to early church fathers, in the Gospel of Basilides, as Dr. Bart Ehrman recently mentioned, we find the same idea that Jesus was not crucified, but that Simon the Cyrene, instead of him, was crucified, and Jesus was a bystander and watched, while everybody thought the man on the cross was Jesus. These are ideas that exist because of the idea that Jesus is God. So it makes sense for these people to adopt such a belief. It doesn't make sense for Islam to adopt that belief. Islam condemns the idea that Jesus is divine and promises hellfire for that. Why would a mere human, a mere prophet, not be killed? Why would he be raised from that cross and replaced with somebody else who would suffer and die instead of him? It doesn't make any sense. 
there are more related questions that need to be asked about Jesus. Other stories were also adopted from such movements. For example, the Quran also mentions a story in which Jesus makes real birds, living birds, out of clay birds. And he does this by breathing into those clay birds and giving them life. Of course, the Quran adds, with the permission of Allah. But why exactly does Jesus give life? Why does Jesus resurrect people and why does he give new life to inanimate beings, to clay birds? This story is found in the infancy gospel of Thomas and it seems that the Quran adopted this story from that gospel or from people who held the same beliefs and had those stories on their minds. The issue is, again, in the infancy gospel of Thomas, this story is explained within context when talking about the childhood of Jesus because Jesus is considered an extraordinary being. He is God. He is divine. He can do amazing things. And he can, because he is God, bring people back to life and give life to things that don't have life. So according to those legends, like in the infancy gospel of Thomas, it makes sense for Jesus to give life to clay birds because it's a later legendary text which explains how Jesus was divine, a god, even in his childhood. It doesn't make sense for Islam to include such a story. The idea of breathing life into beings is reserved for God. Another question is the virgin birth. According to Christian belief, Jesus was born from a virgin without a father. And this idea exists because Jesus is considered the son of God. He does not have a father. This is in alignment with the idea that if he had a father, a biological father, then he would be that biological father's son. But since he does not have a biological father, this indicates that he was born with a miracle as the son of God. God. That is why the virgin birth story exists in Christianity. Why does it exist in Islam? Why was Jesus born of a virgin? It doesn't make any sense. Nobody else was except the first human. And some Muslims want to say this is just to show a miracle and to show that Jesus is pure like the first human. But what's the point of that? Why wasn't the same thing done for other prophets, for all prophets? Why wasn't it done for the most sublime prophet, Muhammad, according to Islam? Why for Jesus? The virgin birth is a major reason for Christians to believe that Jesus is divine and that he is the son of God. Did Allah want to confuse humankind and make them believe that Jesus is the son of God? Because that really worked. This story of the virgin birth was also adopted from Christian stories. Aside from that, Jesus speaks in the cradle as a baby in the Quran. An idea also found in Christian legendary texts to point out how Jesus is something else. Why would Jesus do that in Islam? What's the point? If his function is merely to be a prophet and to lead people to worshiping Allah, why would he do all these special things? Why did Jesus come anyway 2000 years ago? If he is merely a prophet of Allah who is simply there to correct people and to guide them to Allah, why did he come and do nothing and leave? If he is the Messiah, what is the function of the Messiah in Islam? And as a Messiah, why did he come back then and did nothing, according to Islam, except just cause trouble and create the biggest false religion in the world, Christianity? The resurrection is one of the greatest discussions among Christians since early Christianity. Christology revolves around why Jesus was crucified, why he was resurrected, what this means, what his nature is, and so on. And people formed all kinds of different ideas because of this. When the resurrection is such a big issue, why does Islam come and try to clarify things but never even talk about the resurrection? Except saying that people thought they killed Jesus but they killed somebody else and Allah raised Jesus to heaven. Okay, what was the point of that? Allah's plan there led to a major mess and again created the biggest false religion in the world, Christianity. So by letting people believe that Jesus was killed and killing somebody else instead of Jesus who looked like Jesus, Allah tricked humanity and made them follow false beliefs and engage in wrong discussions. Was that Allah's master plan? If Jesus didn't do his job, if Allah made a mess, why wait 600 years to send the true final prophet and the book which is supposed to clarify everything? What is with all the people in between? 
In Islam, we learn that people were accepted as believers before the arrival of Muhammad. But if you look at the 600 years from Jesus till Muhammad, Christians believed in heretical beliefs, according to Islam, such as that Jesus is God or the Son of God, and that he was definitely crucified and resurrected and so on. One big issue is the Quran says in chapter 3 verse 55, Allah said, O Jesus, indeed I will take you and raise you to myself and purify you from those who disbelieve and make those who follow you superior to those who disbelieve until the day of resurrection. Then to me is your return and I will judge between you concerning that in which you used to differ. This is in reference to those people who rejected Jesus and wanted to kill him and those people who accepted Jesus and followed him. Those who followed Jesus were the Christians that we have today, pretty much. They believed in the divinity of Jesus, in his status as the Son of God, that he was crucified, he resurrected and went to heaven. Salvation is only through him. Why does the Quran say this? In fact, this verse has Islamic scholars confused. Islamic scholars disagree on that. They don't know what to do of this because the text clearly indicates that Christians will be superior until the Day of Judgment. Another question is, why is the text, the scripture that will be sent to Jesus according to the Quran, called the Injil, which comes from Greek, Evangelion, Gospel, or Good News? What is this good news that Allah supposedly gave Jesus, wherein you will find guidance? Why is it called good news and what is the good news? In Christianity, it makes sense. Jesus brings the good news to the world and the gospel found in the New Testament, in the gospels, is the foundational message of Christianity. What is the good news in Islam and why was this very important message simply lost and is nowhere to be found? Why does the Quran say that the Christians are simply to follow that gospel which they have with them? And why is that book so devoid of a message that is compatible with Islam and so full of beliefs that are heretical according to Islam? But most importantly, again, why was Jesus not crucified? What is the point? This is a serious question. I really expect an answer to this. Because in the light of everything that we have discussed here, to me it seems very clearly that Islam is incoherent. Islam plagiarizes a religious figure and his message and makes a mess out of it. Islam is not reliable. Islam is false. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please don't forget to like, to subscribe and to share in hopes that we will get proper answers to these questions. If you want to support what I'm doing, please consider supporting this channel on Patreon or on apostateprofit.com. I will be back very soon. Until then, have a fantastic day and stay away from Islam.